What a great place to start with 23s with the great Dermot Brereton. He only played 211 games, Derm, but did he pack so much into those 211 games? So five time, day and night, Dermot Brereton. So he was a superstar. He played with his heart on his sleeve and kicked five goals on debut in a final and just showed the football world how good he was. Played it hard, gave as good as he got, copped so many back as well. But I'll never forget this day. The, the best game I've ever witnessed, 1989 grand final. Uh, this is Durham kicking a bag of goals and a losing grand final to the Bombers that year as well. So just a big game player. And to me, off field, he's been one of the more generous media yeah. people too. Very good to youngsters just, coming through as well. Just so, a yeah. genuinely, he genuinely is. nice person. Yeah, good, yeah. good yeah. points, yeah. Uh, from one Hawthorne number 23 to another, a, a bigger one, Lance Franklin, uh, who has retired this year and will we'll very nicely have a farewell lap of the SCG next Sunday as part of that. But he established himself in 2008 when he kicked 100 goals and then he, uh, we love showing that against with Carl Hooker there chasing him down the MCG mm. wing there and he did that twice on that night. Uh, he had this famous moment in a preliminary final which um, put his team back in front in, uh, in in the latter stages of it. He was hurdling players as we're about to see here including his own teammate Ben Stratton and then went to the Sydney Swans and did it all again from a way of uh, just re-establishing himself as the, one of the all-time greats in the competition. You, you sort of forget how good he was at the Swans. I say that because most of his massive highlights were at Hawthorne but goals like that were, were semi-regular there in the early stages of it. Um, got through to three grand finals as a Swan without being able to to win one and ultimately played in uh, in four losing grand finals, but um, just an extraordinary talent. And good the, the, the lap of honour too. Mm. It's great he's doing it. Yeah. 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 We feature this man's son a lot, so we thought we'd give Shuey Lowe some love, and he was a great player, Stuart Lowe. Two-time All-Australian, almost kicked 600 goals, 594, but he was courageous. He just epitomised St Kilda through this era. I mean, he was just a big colossus of a man, and everybody you speak to at St Kilda just says how much of a wonderful man he is and how good of a bloke he was, and he was a brilliant player, whether he rolled into the ruck at some stages, but as a centre-half forward, back then, playing the hardest position, always had the hardest players to play on. He was the colossus of a player, big Stewie Lowe. What a ripper. Big buckets. Uh, one of my favourite football people ever is Andrew McLeod. And in Adelaide's short history, they've had some champion players. This guy's the best of the lot, I think. So Rashid and McLeod are their best players. That was really early stages of his career. Big time player. No, no one better to watch. Just the way that he glided through the ground. Played all positions, can do that forward. Played through the midfield clear with the two Norm Smith medals. But then went to half back with devastating impact and was one of the first of the real attacking halfback. So his record is extraordinary. 340 games for the Crows, couple of premierships with the two Norm Smith, five-time All-Australian and one of the best highlights packages you will ever see if you're going to put together the best of his football. And once again, like all the champions that we're speaking about today, just a lovely person off the field and um, yeah, he, he's an absolute ripper. Uh, well, I'll go back a little further. Uh, 60s and 70s. You can throw Don Scott in the mix too when yeah. it comes yeah. to number 23. And David so, Dench, TJ, a oh, favourite yeah. at North. Well, yeah. When Lordo said that yeah. it is the most revered mm. number in football, you weren't joking, were you? No. That in 18, of course. But um, uh, I want to go back to Doug Wade, all right, who was an out-and-out -out champion for the Geelong... I mean, for a guy that sort of looked like he was carrying a bit of weight or not there, he certainly was able to sort of do some pretty handy aerial work. But he spread his career over Geelong and North Melbourne. Yeah. 267 games. And Damo, he's one of those pickups with the 10-year rule. Yes, he, he was. Yeah, yeah he, I think he, John Rantel and Barry Davis. Barry Davis and, as yeah. well. Um, Stan Elves came after that uh, that initial flurry of uh, recruits. But, yeah, I mean, he kicked 100 goals for, for, for North in that period too, TJ. Well, he won there's the still comp. people saying, you know, today that, that he was the best and, and obviously got to a 1,000 goals. Well, he did. And uh, four Coleman medals, two premierships and uh, just an out-and-out -out champion and a, and, a, and a worthy member of the 23 family. Speaking of the best, Damo, MJ is the greatest. Uh, always will be. Michael Jordan, uh, what a superstar he was. Six NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls. Six NBA MVPs. 14 All-Stars. Ten times he was the leading scorer in the competition. And uh, you can watch his highlights all day long for what MJ did. Uh, you know, I just watched documentaries, TJ, on what they had to do to try and stop him. Uh, Did you commentate teams. any of his games, Nathan? No, missed no. out. Okay. Uh, and then and the late, great Shane Warne. None better than him either. There'll never be another spinner like him. It's hard for these players like Nathan Lyon, who's been a super bowler, to ever compare because nothing will ever compare to what Shane oh, Warne did. Look at that. The, the deliveries that he, he came up with and just the charisma and the character mm. and the leadership. Uh, what, a, what a player he was.
In key moments too, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, oh, yeah. that, that World Cup in the semi-final. Remember in the early stages of um, the Big Bash League when he was yeah, with the oh, Stars yes. and he was mic'd up and he mm. was saying what he was about yeah. to do? That, that was riveting. Mm. That yeah, was, was riveting. Uh, round 23 moments. The Chief kicked his thousandth goal for the Hawthorne Football Club and in Chief style, didn't celebrate, just acted like it was just another goal. So this was 1994, round uh, yeah, uh, where he kicked this, the Chief. And Come on, Chief. And watch this. Yep. Just get on with the next play this week. <laughs> so no one even bothered me to tell him to get off. <laughs> I think, would I be right in saying that Dacos is the only father son combination to enjoy goal of the year status? And uh, Peter Dacos and Josh Dacos. Yeah. Peter Dacos, let's take a look at his. This is in 1991. And uh, this was the only time Peter Dacos won goal of the year. And were there any other contenders this season? I mean, have a look at that. That is just sheer, sheer magic from a man that we'd come to expect that type of stuff from. And then to pass it down via his football DNA to Josh, who in 2020 came up with a, a, which, you know, a lot of people sort of compared to his dad's, you know, sort of that being hugging the boundary line, etc. cetera. Uh, that gave him goal of the year in 2020. So as again, uh, without actually going through the history books, I think mm. we'd be right in saying the only father-son combination. And again, Peter Dacos, one of the nicest guys you'll ever yeah. meet as well. Yep. Round 23 was uh, in 2016, was a, uh, a high moment, a high drama moment for the Richmond Footy Club. They uh, got beaten by, as you can see on the scoreboard, 113 points by the Sydney Swans, um, who then did go want to make that year's grand final to, to lose it but it prompted the, the most stringent of reviews of the football club at, at the Tigers and Damien Hardwick's position was uh, there on a knife's edge for weeks after it. He eventually was retained. He turned himself and his club's fortunes around instantly to win the very next year's premiership in 2017 and and then again in 19 and 20. But it basically came on the back of this smashing by the Swans in that last round of 216. So, uh, Damo, here is the media conference and a comment he makes after that. He would have been shell-shocked, but he spoke of what they need to do. It's been a disappointing year. It's what you learn from the year that's important. You know, look at any sporting club, any organisation, there's always a kick in the backside at some stage, and this is our kick in the backside. So the important thing for us is what we learn from this year. Um, you know, from a coaching point of view, from a playing list point of view, from a football club point of view. If only he knew then. Mm, yeah. Maybe he did. Hey, um, what do you do next week for round 24? Uh, there's still uh, some... We have round 24, no. But some great 24s will do the job for us. <laughs> Any off the top of your head? Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Jed Hughes? Yeah. Chris Langford was 24. Was he? Yeah, he was. Oh, well, there you go. Well, yeah. Okay, we're going to do a whole segment. He, Clark and Lockie coming up later. And Peter Knights. Yeah. 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 Peter Knights was 24. Maybe Langford was 28, was he? Or? Hmm. Was Peter Knights 24? I think it's mm. 24. Oh, he'll feature yeah. for the whole I'll segment. All right, 